Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Vanessa Rose. So happy that you decided to tune in and join us for another great edition today. Today we are joined by Steph Kars, and he is a nutrition specialist, and he is going to be discussing some wonderful things about health with us today. Steph, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. I know that nutrition is something that is kind of, it's been your life, you teach about it, you live it, you breathe it, it's everything that's about you. But before we get started talking about that, would you first share a little bit about yourself and maybe your story and how you kind of got involved in nutrition? I got, I got involved 20 some years ago uh, when my father passed away. And um, I wanted to understand, you know, you, you feel so powerless when somebody you love and you can't help them. I wanted to understand how the, the, the immune system works. I wanted to understand more about what, the importance of what we put in our body. And um, so I couldn't help my dad 20 some years ago, but I was able to help my stepfather mm -hmm. 10 years later. So it's just a matter of educating ourselves. And today we're, we have you know, a platform that we can do this today with the internet, right? Yes. And, and so, so it's really, really important to know like I was telling you the other day, I said, I don't put anything in my mouth if I can't pronounce it, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's so. a good way to look at it because I know that sometimes, especially when you get in the habit of reading labels, yes. which is a great habit to have if yes. you really want to live a healthy lifestyle, there's so many chemicals and so many different names that it's just, it's, if you can't pronounce it. You, you know, what's, what's funny is that we pay attention to the fuel we put in our cars, but we don't pay enough attention to what we put in our body, and that's our vehicle, really. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and it's, that's where it starts. The real issue that we're facing in North America is the food is not what it was 20 years ago. It's not what it was 10 years ago. And, and a lot of nutrients have been lost, you know, through all the, the processed uh, food. And um, so, so today is not almost, I, I'm almost wanting to say, it's not what you're eating as much as what's in the food you're eating that you have no clue. Absolutely. No, that's absolutely true. And, and thank you so much for joining us here for this first segment. For our viewers at home, today we're discussing health. And our first topic is, you guessed it, nutrition. <laughs> so nutrition is something, like you said, it's, it's not so much what you're eating, it's what's in the food. It's something that we hear the term organic all of the mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's something that scares a lot of people because people that maybe don't have a lot of extra income or a lot of ability to spend a lot of extra money, they hear organic and they assume, I can never afford organic. It's way too expensive. It's something, but it's something that really is obtainable today, and you can really find things, and you can find ways. And does it really make a difference? Yeah, and it's actually cheaper. In the long run, we got to stop the short-term goals, Riley, and see it to the, see the big picture, because in the in the big picture is that if you are feeling better, there's no price for that. People want to feel good. They're tired of being tired, right? So the fuel has a big importance in this. And so organic also, you got to know where to go. You know, there's some stores out there that will, you know, take your whole wallet, right? Mm -hmm. but, but once you learn how to shop and, and, and where to go, it really is cheaper because there's less sick days, right? Because you're, you're a little more better in shape, right? You feel great less medical bills mm -hmm. so the 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 ripple effect is just so filled with benefits that uh, you know again you have to know where to go yes and it, it goes beyond just eating organic though it, it it is in part what we're eating it's a lifestyle it is right? it's a lifestyle yes. and it's something it's a lifestyle that you live yes. and so um what is something what what is what is good advice for people if they are trying to create a meal if they're living a busy life what's the best way what are the best things for people to keep like in the refrigerator to eat and and maybe first go with that and then explain maybe the way that a portions work and the way that a plate works in a sure. meal yeah sure for me uh, I'm a protein guy so so uh, what I noticed is that if I start my meal with protein it fills me up so mm -hmm. that I don't overeat. Because I love to eat. I mean, I really do. If it's good food especially. So what I do is I, I take my plate, I, I, have, I divide it in three equal portions. Then I have about the, the size of my fist of protein, right? And I could use the same amount of starch. Now what's a starch? A starch is like potatoes, it's like uh, dessert, uh, you know, anything that transforms into glucose, right? And, and um, rice, bread pasta. 
uh, wine, liquor is. So I have one of the one from that group, and then I have greens, a lot of vegetables with that, as much as I want. So if I maintain this portion, according to Dr. Donald K. Lehman, who is considered the father of metabolism, it takes one protein to burn one carb. Mm. We, should, we should have an average of about 100 to 130 grams of carbs a day, but we are eating over 300 carbs, you know, grams wow. of carbs. And so therefore, it's like you're, you're, you're getting too much fuel and then the body stores it and perceives it as, as fat. And then so to help this pr vicious process really uh, a cycle is really to start with your protein because it will fill you quicker because you're going to have to chew the meal, the meat, right? A little bit more. Uh, it's like the carbohydrates are partially digested in the mouth. So, so, mm. so, um, so it's quicker absorbed. So you need more, right? And so, the, but by the time you, you digest your protein, you start with your protein, then it tells your brain that you've had enough. Okay. And usually you won't even finish the carb if you do it the right way. So you go like clockwise, you start with your protein, then you go with the green and then you finish with the carb. Okay. That, that's an easy way to control the portions. The thing though with carbs is car not all carbs are created equally. No, they're not. And so what, what are good carbs that smart people can carbs. eat? What yes. are smart carbs? Because there's simple carbs and then there's yes. complex carbs. Yes, so what, yes. what are the complex smart carbs? Well, the berries. Okay. Berries is one of the best um, fruits we have. You know, I suggest people get it organic if they can. Um, that's smart carbs, right? You have um, different type of rice could be also smart carbs. Mm. Um, anything that is basically starchy is not the smart carbs. Okay. So like a brown rice would be better than a white rice. It's absolutely. not as heavy of starch. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. There's all kinds Beans of... are smart carbs too. Ah. Beans and they also are... have a lot of protein in them, don't they? Well, a, a, yeah, a bean will have, um, the red beans, for example, will have about seven grams of protein versus 15 grams of carb. Okay. So it's out of ratio as if we look at the one for one. So you, you consider that's going to be your starch, mm. right? So you make sure you have enough protein to go along. Okay. Like for instance, for me, I don't want to feel deprived. I don't like the word diet because I like to eat everything. If I want ice cream, I'm going to have ice cream, mm -hmm. but I'm going to have maybe a protein shake with it okay. before to balance it out. It seems like a, um, a lot of discipline, but it's worth it. That way you never feel that hunger pang or whatever starvation that you crave for something. Yes. So if I want to have pizza, I will make my own dough. And then I love pizza. I, I love pizza. I make it and I'm, I put a little bit more meat and not just pepperoni because then yeah. don't tell me it's pure protein, right? Yeah. So, so it's common sense. To, no, it absolutely yes, is. Yes. It is, but it, it's common sense to you and to maybe to me, but to some people it's, mm -hmm. it's very helpful because even though there's a lot of resources out there, I think sometimes people just get consumed with life and it's so easy it's to confusing. stop and to grab something at the drive through and not realize that, like you said, if you eat pizza, you're going to make your own pizza. Mm -hmm. There's a difference in the quality of ingredients and what you're preparing and the amount of sodium. And right. I know that like, like if you go to like a pizza chain and order mm -hmm. a pizza, there's like something, there's like over a thousand grams of sodium in like yeah, a serving yeah, right, or right. something, and that's, that's very dangerous for you. Yes, You're not is. supposed to have that much yeah. salt. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we hear a lot about is low fat, non fat, all of these things. Is fat bad for you, and is it bad for your weight? No, actually, the good fat will help you lose weight, and it's brain food. I'm talking about, because, um, you know, it's, it's it, it, let, me, let me open this parenthesis here. In the 50s, they started to lower the heart disease, to lower the intake of fat. And the rates of heart disease today, in spite of the low fat, has increased. So they figured that it was wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So now they're changing it. Carbohydrates are more the cause of inflammation. Uh, it's a lot of carbohydrates are man-made, right? So, and, but but um, you, you got you to know that they're more addictive too. That's why I say start with your protein so that you can feel that craving get out of your system, right? Uh, but not yet. Yeah, fat, no, not uh, good fat is really important. Coconut oil, yes. for instance, avocado, uh, you know, organic butter, mm -hmm. grass fed cows is great. No, yeah, it's and very good for your body. Yeah, absolutely, and that's pure energy. Well, and fat always also makes you feel fuller longer, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yeah, it's pure energy. Yeah, I remember reading, reading, it was a, a guy who did 
cross skiing across I forgot where. Mm -hmm. But he was drinking his coffee and he put half a butter, a half a pound of butter in the coffee and he was able to go for hours, right? Now I'm not saying that it's tasting great, but there goes to show you that fat is fuel. And, and uh, I mean, the good fat, that is. Yeah. Remember, your brain is 90% made of fat. Wow. So, so you need to, you know, that's why fish oil, right? They, they say it's good for the brain. So if I'm, if I'm a little heavier on the scale, it's because my brain is very large at the time. Uh. No, <laughs> just kidding. But no, that's absolutely true. And that's why fish oil is very good for people that, mm -hmm. are, that are suffering issues. Depending where issues. it sources, like, yes. 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 That are suffering with issues. That's actually one thing. Um, fish. Is fish good for people? Is that something? I know there's some people that like to eat it. Some people say it's good. Some people say it's bad. What is what is the opinion? What's the take on, on fish? I can give you my opinion, what I think of it, because uh, I'd hate to point fingers and say, yes. you know, um, I would, if I buy fish, I would buy something frozen from a wild cut, you know, from the cold water. I know you're going to tell me there's a little bit of mercury in it. Yes, there is. But there's ways to get rid of mercury. You mm -hmm. know, uh, you can do that. Um, you know, cilantro is a great way to get rid of some of the pest. You know, the mercury. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I love cilantro. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. And, and chlorophyll will do that. There's different things that will do that. Kelp will do that as well. Um, pectin from a citrus fruit that we talked mm. about will do that. But um, fish. That, in my case, that's what I would do. Okay. I would buy the frozen one. So stay away from, from farmed fish then? or I don't want to say this. Yeah. Right. But I won't eat it. Okay. No, I mean, there's, there's plenty of research to back up the fact that yeah, farmed yeah. We, fish Yeah, yeah. And people, I, you know what I always say to people, education is power. Yes. Do your research. Come with your own conclusions. See if it makes sense to you. We have a platform that is incredible today that everyone can really do their research and, and be educated, so don't be lazy about that. I think it's important, it's your health, it's your body, it's your temple. Mm -hmm. right? No, absolutely, I think yeah. it's taking care of it. Like you said, I think that's the best analogy if you put good fuel in your car. Yes, well, right, the right, most right. important vehicle is your You go and change the body. oil every three months, right? Uh, or every 3,000 miles? Yeah, no, that's absolutely mm -hmm. true, and that's something that we need to take a little more care of as with ourselves, and it's important because we're gonna be there then for our families, and if you have children, or if you have grandchildren, or you have people in your life that are special, you're gonna be there longer and live a longer, healthier life. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, so there's so much benefits from it. You know, a lot of people are saying, well, today people live longer. Yeah, right, but the last 10, 15 years, they don't want to live them, you know, because they're in pain. Yeah. A and uh, we know that aging is inflammation, and inflammation is caused by poor nutrition also. Mm. You know, that's one of the major reasons, right? Yes, no, absolutely. Well, Steph, thank you for this first segment of Joy in Our Town, and um, thank you so much at home for watching. Um, we are going to be right back, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a quick second. Don't allow your weight to threaten your health or control your future. Excess weight or obesity can cause emotional and physical health risks, but you can take control. The Your Weight Matters campaign offers free resources and tips to help you measure and understand your weight. Take the Your Weight Matters Challenge. The free toolkit prepares you to speak with a healthcare provider about your weight. Your weight does matter. Take the challenge and take control today. Hello and welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Vanessa Rose. Thank you so much for staying with us. If you just happen to be joining us, today we are discussing health with Steph Kars. He's a nutritionist and specialist. And it's we just got done speaking about nutrition and now we're going to speak about mental health. Thank you for staying with us, Steph. Thank you, thank you for having me. So yeah, it's a pleasure <laughs> to have you. It's something that, um, we, we, all need, we all need to hear about. It's something that affects all of us. And mental health is something Whenever we speak of mental health, we're not necessarily speaking about mental health, I don't think, in the aspect of maybe depression or things of that nature, but more of mental power and, and the, the, build, the, the power that we have within our mm -hmm. minds. Is that kind of more along the lines of where you're going with that? Well, we know that, that uh, thoughts create uh, matters, right? And uh, so it's important to keep our, our thoughts healthy. Mm -hmm. um, because thoughts create matter, what you say to yourself has a repercussion in your own uh, in your own life, right? What you're gonna, what's gonna permeate around you. So, um, and you know, it's 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 we're bombarded with so much negativity around us. So it's really important to keep our our our, our mind healthy and positive. And, and for me, I wanted you know to stop that internal chatter, right? And just say, 
okay, so how do I get rid of all these things, right? And um, there's something that I found on, um, actually by doing some research on it as well that has been proven um, effective scientifically. There's five little things that we can all do. First is to journal, right? To journal um, three things at the end of the day that you're grateful for. Things that happened during the day that said, I am grateful today because I did this interview with Vanessa. That's something to be grateful. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is that you're grateful, I'm grateful because my, uh, my child had great grades today at school or was, you know, whatever it is, but to journal it as the first step, clear. The second step was also to include um, meditation. You know, take time when you're alone that you can withdraw from the phones, from the, from the surrounding, right? Just time that it's just private to you. No computer, no emails, no, no distraction whatsoever. And, and, you know, you don't have to do this for 20 minutes at the time. You, everything you do, you have to do at slow pace, baby steps. If one minute a day is a beginning, you know, it's, it's all you can do, well, that's the beginning. And, and that will change. And eventually, mm -hmm. you work to two minutes, to three minutes. But but that time alone is healthy for the mind, where you can empty uh, your thoughts. Well, our minds aren't made to be turned on all day, every day, the way that they are with no, cell they, phones and technology. They're oh not made gosh. for that. It no. just it's overload. And it's overload. Your mind needs to rest and to rejuvenate and to process and to think, because our minds were never made to to digest the amount of information we're fed consistently whenever we're online whenever we're watching TV it just it never stops yeah and, and that's the thing you know the it's constant movement right around us we are bombarded with so much information that it's hard to keep up with just technology what today's technology will be passed in three months from now so so it's going faster and faster and faster uh, yet the heartbeat at the same rhythm that it always has so that time is really important for your balance, for your mm -hmm. mental balance. The third thing I, I um, actually is, uh, is to, in the journal to also manifest one moment during the day where you can be specific. A moment that you were proud of yourself. The moment that you thought, hey, you know what, I said the right thing at the right time, or I acted the way I've always wanted to act, or I ate the right food for whatever. Just that moment when you can relive it for a few seconds. And you're going to relive it if you journal it, right? Because you're going you're to be able to, to relive it. And that's reprogramming the brain about the positiveness that, you can, that can happen in your life, right? Mm. So you're, 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 you're reliving it. So the more detail you are in your journal, the more impactful it will be for you. The fifth thing is that I always say, uh, well, it's not, uh, not I always say, that's come from the same study, but I agreed with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's to do one good deed a day, something that makes you feel good that you do. You don't have to say to anybody. You can journal it, though, but it's private. You know, something good. Oh, well, I, I picked up the garbage on the street or whatever it is, you know, like uh, some papers that were flying over. So whatever it is, a good deed, or I gave a sandwich to a homeless or uh, whatever it is as a good deed. And, and you, you journal it again. Again, you could see where I'm going with this. It's reprogramming your mind. It's, 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 uh, it's kind of uh, bringing up that self-worth at the mm -hmm. same time. And the last thing would be work out. Mm. Work out. I'm not saying to be a slave at working out to become mm -hmm. a you know a gym rat. Right? Yeah. I'm, I'm saying workout is a great way because it's going to make blood flow throughout your body. It's going to bring more oxygen here. You're going to feel more mentally alert. And there's easy workout. And again, like the meditation, you don't have to do two hours or an hour. No. You start slowly. If I, if uh, if walking for you is a workout, then start with five minutes. Then you work it yourself to six minutes. You know, but as long as you do that, that discipline of doing it, then it's it reprogramming your health, uh, your mental health. I think it's about being honest with yourself then and kind of meeting yourself where you're at. Where you're saying, at, yes. This Don't is try where to be I'm what at. You're not. This mm. is not, I'm not going to go to some crazy gym that does intense workouts for an no, hour and a half no, and it's not for everybody. throw myself in there. And, and, and I think that it's something whenever people hear the word workout or start to exercise or something like that, or even, they have even daily meditation, they this. do. And yes. they think that it's something that's beyond their, beyond their capacity and it's not. 
You know, I had a friend of mine who was an, who's a nurse, and uh, when I met her three, four, almost four years ago, she wouldn't even think about working out. She started five minutes. I was just telling her, just start a little bit, you know? And then she started, and today she does the 5K. If wow. I would have told her that five years ago, she would have said, you're crazy. That's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. <laughs> I'm not one of those. I yeah. <laughs> so, so, but I'm not saying you're going to have to run the 5K, you know, but what I'm getting is that it's, it's a muscle that you're training, a mental muscle that, that re will remember, oh gosh, I feel good when I take my walk. I'm missing it. I want to do my walk or I want to do my exercise. And there's tricks, you know, we, just different type of exercise. You got to do what fits you, like you said. No, absolutely. I mean, I know that I've even, you know, to that meditation, you can take it beyond just silence. I know mm -hmm. that there's even been days I go to run and it's, yeah. you're exhausted and you're tired and you don't want to go. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just repeat to myself, you're capable, you're, you're, able, you're, to, you're yes. able, you can do this, you can do this. And it's just that, that, that positive, just motivation, even to yourself that mm -hmm. I think is so important and so crucial. But, um, with the working out, that's something that does it clears your mind as well, mm -hmm. and it helps you. It's it's the More days. More oxygen too. Right? Well, absolutely. It's mm -hmm. the days you feel the least like going. Yes. That you show up and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't want to go. That's why. But it's you're happy. It's, you're happy afterwards. Afterwards. Well, that's why it's and that's it's good to have what an accountability partner, someone you go with. Yes. So that way, it's the days you don't feel like it. They're like, come on, and the, the days they don't yeah. feel like it, it's like you're like, come on, and yes, yes. and that's important. But for people that don't have an accountability partner, that can't go to a gym, that you know maybe. Maybe they're maybe they're a little bit older. Maybe they're not in great shape. Maybe there's a little bit of fear of going to a gym. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that haven't been in years. They feel people they're going to show up and everyone's going to look at them. It's like trust me, none of us are experts in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. I wish that I could tell people that I'm like, don't worry, we're not judging you. We're trying to make it through this too. Sure, so, right, right. But there are a lot of people that can't get out to a gym or can't leave their home, mm -hmm. and so they just need something to do at home. So can you please show us maybe? If we could get up and you could show oh, for some of our viewers sure, sure. what people can do at home. Yeah, I could do that. I, I give you some example. But walking, I want to share this story with you because you'll love this. Yes. This lady that I knew, she was extremely overweight. And she started walking a little bit. And what happened is her neighbors were watching her walking. And then after six months, she had the whole neighborhood walking with her. <laughs> so she set the trend, right? Oh, my goodness. So, See, right, so just... different things we can do, right? Yes. Um, if you want to strengthen your legs, because that's a weakness, you know, we need to strengthen the legs because that's supporting the whole body. And what's the first thing that goes, right? When yes. you get older is, is you can support yourself. Uh, you know, if you find a wall here that is strong enough to uh, sustain me, right? Yes, <laughs> I think so. So, it's a so, set, so you we'll go see. like this very, very, I mean, you don't have to do, um, go lower at first, you know, just as long as you can. You count maybe to 20 or 10 or whatever you can. And as soon as you do, let's say we do 10. After 10, you go a little lower. Then you do another 10. A little lower. And do, and until you feel that little heat, you know, there, that there's something moving inside. Mm -hmm. And you could go, and eventually you'll be able to do this and be able to get up and do, you know, and that will strengthen your, your whole body because your legs are the biggest muscle, right? No, they absolutely are. So that's an easy thing we could do, right? I'm not going to well, make you do this with your dress. Well, right? yeah, I was going to say that could be interesting. But anyway, so <laughs> I won't be joining him up against the wall today. But that's one thing you said. You want to feel a little bit of a burn because if you don't feel yes, a burn, you, you nothing's happening. Yes, you need to feel a burn. Yes, you yeah. need to feel a burn. The, the other thing is that you could just, uh, you know, uh, one exercise that is really cool is to start slowly. It could be just this. Let's say you have a watch here, uh, a stopwatch. You do this for about a minute and a half. And then for 30 seconds after this, then you're going to really accelerate and do a little faster, right? And you do that for another 30 seconds. After the 30 seconds, you go back to that slow pace for a minute and a half. It could be just that. And, you know, because I'm not saying if you're not familiar with, you don't want to join, you know, jump too much because yeah. it hurts the joint. Start slowly. But what's important is that you take a minute and a half to warm up. Then you go through that 30 seconds as fast as you can, right? And then go back to that minute and a half. You can do that for 10 minutes. And if you do this properly, that will burn as much calories as you do like a good half hour to 45 minutes on the treadmill. Why? Because it, it's forcing your heart all of a sudden to pump yes. uh, faster. So well, it's intervals. So you're taking your heart rate up and down. It's brilliant. 
It's brilliant to do that. And, and you can do that in any kind of exercise. If, if you're younger, you want to try to you know, go, go like this at first. You can do things like that, just like that, without hurting your knees, you know, mm -hmm. just slowly. Are you going to go into a full, full, full blurpy just for like us that. there? And then, then I won't do it too fast here, because I don't want to lose my microphone. I was going right? to say, oh, I, was, I thought he was going to do a full blurpy for us there. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I won't you, be down there you with you. You keep that process of doing a minute and a half slow and then a 30-second fast in whatever exercise you decide to do. Yes. A and that will pump, you know, the blood throughout the body. And that's a great, great way to feel uh, certainly energized. No, it is. And that's great. And that's for all our viewers at home. If you're at home and you can't get away to a gym and you can't do something, the purpose of us being here is to educate you, to help you, to bring some joy into your town. We want you to be around a long time to keep coming back and see us every week and also for your families and your friends, for your loved ones. And so these are just simple things that you can try at home that anyone can do. And challenge yourself. You know, it's truly all about education and about self, self-motivation and encourage yourself, be kind to yourself, love yourself yourself and know that you are here for a reason and that your health is just as important to us and we love bringing these shows to you every week so we can't wait to see you here next week on joy in our town this program has been sponsored by the trinity broadcasting network and is made possible by your telethon dollars your continual support can keep joy in our town coming to your home every week Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.